Now I find digital storage really important and that may be because I make YouTube videos like this one. A video like this can generate gigabytes of data. I also like uh, amateur photography and I've got a whole bunch of documents that I like to keep. But even if you're not into any of those things, even like gaming, I mean, some of the games today can take, what, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, gigabytes. So you never seem to have enough disk space. And then on top of that, you need a backup because disk failure is a real thing. So just having all my photos, all my video files in one place isn't good enough. I need to have them backed up. So here in my home studio, I've got all kinds of different types of storage, starting, of course, with the humble SD card, micro SD card, which I might use in the cameras and so on. Then I've got network attached storage. Uh, and then also I've got direct attached storage. So that might just be a hard drive connected over USB 3 or something more sophisticated. Now, what I have here is a hybrid direct attached storage unit. It can hold up to eight hard drives giving you a possibility of 128 terabytes of storage. Now, why is it hybrid? Well, you can store four traditional hard drives, so 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch uh, hard drives or SATA SSDs, and then another four NVMe drives using the M2 slot, so eight drives in total. And then on top of that, two of those drives from the traditional uh, type can be used in a RAID configuration. So in this video, I want to do a tour of the uh, Terramaster D8 Hybrid, look at how it all works, show you how it all fits together, do some speed testing to see the advantages of direct attached storage over network attached storage, and then tell you about the Kickstarter campaign. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the big advantage of direct attached storage over network attached storage is that it's connected directly to your PC, in my case, my laptop, and it gives you that higher speed of connection. Now, because it's using USB 3.2 Gen 2, now, if you find that a bit confusing, I do have a whole video here on this channel about the different USB standards, but USB 3.2 Gen 2 can give you 10 gigabits per second of data. Now, my network here, I'm on one Gigabit, gigabit ethernet, one gigabit per second. So automatically from the start, there's a potential of 10 times faster access speed compared to if I'm using network attached storage. Now, because it's direct attached storage, you just connect it to the USB port to your computer, whether that's Windows, Linux, Mac OS, doesn't matter, it works with all of them. And then the drives appear inside of the operating system. So in Windows world, that might be you know, the F drive, the G drive, H drive, you know, whatever you've got to catch it goes up to, H drives can be connected here. It's also pretty quiet, optimized for power efficiency. The fan is pretty silent on it. So overall, it's not going to annoy you while it's connected. It's just gonna be there and give you the potential of, as I said, up to 128 terabytes of storage connected directly to your PC. Now let's just talk a little bit more about the transfer speeds as this really is one of the major advantages compared to network attached storage. As I said, up to 10 gigabits per second. Now that does depend on the type of drive you've got in there. Obviously a traditional mechanical hard drive is gonna be different to an NVMe drive over PCI, for example. Uh, it depends on the port that you've got on your PC. And it depends on the type of cable that you use. Now here are some numbers to show you what is possible under different configurations. Now, if you're using a traditional hard drive in RAID 1, and we'll talk more about RAID 1 in a moment, you're gonna get speeds of around 180 to 200 megabytes, megabytes per second. If you're using two hard drives in a RAID 0 configuration, then you can get up to 345 megabytes per second. Now, this is because of the speed of the physical hard drive. They're mechanical and they have a limited speed. If you're using a SATA SSD drive, then you could get maybe 450 megabytes per second. And if you're using an NVMe uh, SSD connected via the M2 slot, then you can get the full potential of that USB connection, 900 megabytes per second. Now I've actually tested that and that's, these are the numbers I'm actually getting in my setup. So as I said, that's what happens depending on the drives that you've got connected. But it also depends on what type of port you've got on your PC. So just using the NVMe drive with the M2 slot, because that gives us the greatest uh, data throughput. If you use USB 3.2 Gen 1, then you're gonna get about a maximum of 420 megabytes per second. 
If I use my MacBook Air with the M1 processor in it, using the USB-C connector on it, then I get about 700 megabytes per second, megabytes per second. And if I use a USB 4 port on my mini PC, then I do get that maximum 900 megabytes per second. So depending on what port you've got, you're gonna get different speeds. So your setup, you're gonna to have to balance the types of drive you put inside of the unit and where you're connecting it to. If you haven't got USB 3.2 Gen 2, you're not gonna get the same speed. If you're using a traditional hard drive, then you're not gonna get the same speeds. And the other thing to note is it does depend on the cable. You get a USB-C to USB-C cable. With that, I was able to get the maximum 900 megabytes per second. In fact, I use a good quality rated USB-A to USB-C connector. And with that, I was able to get 900 megabytes per second. But when I used a cheap, unrated uh, USB-A to USB-C cable, then I was only getting 40 megabytes per second. So if you get it really wrong, you can connect this thing to the wrong type of USB port with the wrong type of cable using a very slow hard drive and you're not gonna get the performance you're expecting. However, if you use an NVMe drive with a machine that's got a PC that's got USB 3.2 Gen 2 in it and you use a proper cable, then you're gonna get that 900 megabytes per second. Now I said we would just talk about RAID for a moment. On the back of the device, there is a selector where you can configure drives one and two or zero and one, depending on how you number them, to be in a RAID configuration. That's the first two 3.5 inch hard drives on the left hand side. So I've got two hard drives in there and I can configure them differently. Uh, and for example, with RAID zero, RAID one. Now the different levels are just single, which means they're individual drives. So they just appear as two drives connected to your PC. You can put them as JBOD, just a bunch of disks, which means they appear as one drive, but you've got no idea how that data is spread across the two drives. There's no performance tuning. There's no redundancy. It just puts the data on those drives. If one drive fails, you lose everything. Then you've got RAID 0, which means that they are striped. Now this means this is good for performance. So both drives are there and the data is interleaved between the two drives. Great for read speed because as it's reading, it reads from each drive, which does boost your read speed significantly. But the problem with that one is, is that if one drive fails, again, you lose everything. And if you want redundancy, then you can use RAID 1 mirroring and then everything that's on one drive is then also copied and written to the second drive. Now in some RAID 1 mirroring setups, read speed is also improved because it can read from both drives because the data is available on both drives. However, in this setup, it seems to be when you're doing a big contiguous block of copying, you know, a big uh, file from my camera or something like that, it only seems to use one drive. So there isn't really an advantage in uh, that in terms of read performance. However, there is in terms of redundancy. Now I did a test to also see what happens when one of the drive fails. So I had it set up in RAID 1. I removed one of the drives rebooted the machine and everything. And then what happens is it comes up into a degraded state. The data is still there because it's on the other drive. You can use it, you can access it. Uh, and then once you replace the failed drive and pop it back in again, the light goes red to show that it is being repaired. And then it, it, everything that's on one drive gets copied over to the other drive to bring it back up to that equal state. That can take several hours, even eight hours, 10 hours, just depending on the size of your drives there. And then once that's done, they're both back up and running and green and you've got access to uh, the redundancy again and both drives are holding both sets of data. Now, plugging in the drives is pretty simple. There's the drive slot at the front of the drive. You can pop off the side cover to put in those NVMe drives. Pretty simple, didn't have any trouble in installation, any of the types of drives in there. So fairly easy to use for just about everybody. You shouldn't have a problem in setting this thing up. It was launched today on Kickstarter. If you go and back the project, you can get it for $199. It's $100 off, one third off of the guesstimated retail price, which will be $299. Of course, it's from TerraMaster, who have been around for years providing all kinds of uh, story solutions. So no worries there. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do let me know in the comments below what you think about the TerraMaster D8 Hybrid. Will you back that project? Will you be getting one? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.